Hi, I'm Erwin Denissen, founder of HiLogic. Our flagship product is Font Creator. It is a Windows-based font editor that aims to provide all the tools you need to view, edit and test your fonts. The first release dates back to 1997. During this talk I will present the next upcoming major release of Font Creator. We have redesigned the user interface, which now comes with dockable panels. And we have finally added support for variable fonts. The shaping engine has been improved and the OpenType designer now fully supports the Adobe feature syntax. We expect to start the beta period within a couple of days, so drop us an email if you're interested. Um, I will now share my screen so I can show you all the new features and improvements. After this demo there will be time for questions. The internal structures and properties to make a variable font are dictated by the OpenType specification, so other font editors usually have similar user interface elements. Font Creator tries to expose as much of this data as possible. Because of th this approach, uh, the user interface can be overwhelming. That is the main reason why we introduced the new dockable panels. You can see them here at the right and at the bottom. Well, I will just um, open a variable font to show you what can be done with it. This is Inter. It's, an, uh, it's a font from uh, Rasmus Anderson. You see uh, here the Masters and Layers panel where you can switch between the individual masters. Below it you see the variations panel and here you have um, also the means to interpolate. Uh, there are many more settings uh, hidden away right now. Uh, the font properties panel shows most of them. This is all um, information that is, can be stored in the font file. A lot of this can be uh, calculated by font creator and some fields uh, can be added to some settings in the in the tools area so for every new font you will have some personalized information well this font has two uh, axes weight and slant and several axis values the masters you can um, you can uh, add or change uh, the fields of the masters and the instances. The instances are the, the um, well the specific uh, locations in the design space that will uh, become available in in other applications. So, uh, for example, you can s select the thin um, style of this font. In, uh, in the software that uses the font. Uh, the, the instances also have some uh, properties, uh, not that much. Below are some in case you want to export your instances as individual, individual, individual standalone fonts. And that's sometimes necessary if, you're, if you want to also give your customers fonts so uh, they can still use them with uh, software that does not support variable font technology. Well, the OpenType layout features with, with this font can be sh seen and edited through the OpenType designer. There are a lot of features. Uh, 
and all of this is um, interactive so you can well you can test if your features are working as expected or not and obviously uh, kerning is also one of uh, the features that is supported with kerning uh, and variable fonts they can uh, have in different values uh, per master um, in this case you see the kerning value is also interpolated and um, well you can also edit the feature code with font creator in the adobe feature syntax this is all native uh, decompiled uh, by font creator and you can uh, edit it it even supports the new um, suggested enhancement to the adobe feature syntax to support the variable fonts inside the feature code and this is some new uh, thing that simon cousins uh, has proposed uh, it allows you to define um, values per master or per location in the design space so you can um, edit one variable font within one user interface uh, all at once you can also export the font um, it's all pretty straightforward now it's exported you can also um, prepare it for a, a web page uh, test page and then you can uh, see if it works within your web browser the web page we currently have uh, is not supporting the sliders yet so well for now i have to <laughs> go to the inspect uh, area and then i can use the the homa no this is not the right one okay the web font so here you can uh, test if your font works as expected in your web browser okay this is inter mm, you can also um, open a UFO or a design space uh, and let OS one I haven't seen the variable font uh, from Leto so uh, it was uh, a good test case to see if the font creator was able to actually create a variable font out of this uh, design space well loading UFOs is well take some time Um, well most people have probably already looked into variable fonts or are making them but um, well for the people who haven't made them yet to make a variable font you will need to add one or more axes and then you have to add compatible glyph outlines to the masters with variable fonts overlaps are explicitly allowed so people who are used to make traditional fonts and might not they might need to get used to this new approach um, personally I like it it's really uh, it, it, it gives you a lot of more freedom to uh, design your outlines um, and even uh, it allows you to open existing fonts and to uh, further edit them if, if needed
12. We're almost there. I will later show you also a, a color font, a color variable font. Okay, so this one is open. Um, well, the tag colors are defined inside the UFO for, um, packages. Well, all seems to look normal. Let me see if it's also interpolating. It actually is working, that's good. The features are also imported. Even some localized features were uh, are available in the font. And let's see if it also comes with variable kerning. Easiest to see if it uh, contains variable kerning is to open the via. Yeah, there's a lot of different specific um, values per master. Um, well, you also can add variations to um, the features. And this allows you to have some conditional um, uh, replacement of, of glyphs or a conditional uh, kerning um, in case the location of the, the instance that the user is seeing is at a specific point that you consider it to have uh, some, some different uh, rules applied. For example, you can uh, specify um, a specific weight condition, and well, then we also need to add a specific feature for this. We will add the required variation alternates. Oh, not here. In this case, we added to Latin, not to Latin script, but to the default language. We keep it empty and we add another feature. And this one is not used yet. Uh, we will add uh, a substitution. Just want to illustrate that it will uh, work. A to B. And now we will replace feature variation, required feature variation uh, one with the required variation alternates two. And now you will see at 500, it will actually replace the whole feature, um, which will, um, well, trigger the substitution. You can also add um, such uh, conditions and, and variations with um, the GPOS table, so with positioning uh, features and lookups. Uh, 
well the actual outlines this is all pretty basic stuff I think uh, all of you were uh, know how you can add uh, outlines and uh, well you can also see the other masters if required and you can of course make changes but We keep it this way. Okay, one last font is a, a color font. It's also a variable font. It's not made with Font Creator, but it's great to show how Font Creator can uh, allow you to make such fonts as well. We uh, need some more panels because uh, color fonts uh, have a palette and they also have specific members to in, in case of the the color fonts with the the the, the Microsoft color uh, tables in this case there's only one glyph with the color that's a G and it's made out of several layers you can see them here and when you open the G you can actually select the individual layers and you can change the color if that's needed or you can you can also fill and it's also interpolating Um, well, I think I've covered a lot about uh, the, the way you can make uh, variable fonts. The, the, the beta is not ready yet, it's almost there. Um, there are still some things that uh, we need to work out. It's uh, probably a matter of days and then, uh, well, if you're interested, do send us an email and uh, you can join the beta. All right, thank you. Um, if there are questions uh, or comments, uh, do let, uh, let me know. Hey, everyone. That was lovely. Thank you. <clears throat> Great stuff. So, um, <clears throat> oh, looks like we even have our first questions up. Mm -hmm. um, Nicholas Waxweiler from Dalton Mog wants to know, how good is the support for UFO and design space import and export? Um, what, what was the question about the UFO? They're wondering how good your support is for importing and exporting both UFO and design space. So basically variable UFO. <clears throat> um, well, it, it, it can, Font Creator can open the design space along with all the, 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 the UFO uh, uh, source files. And it can also export them to UFO if, if needed. But you can also export it as, as a variable font, as I showed with uh, Leto, I think. <laughs> cool. I, I can I can show some more uh, um, if I could share my screen. I'm not sure how I, how I can do that, but um, then I could sh show you also the feature variations with um, the positioning uh, kerning, for example. Mm -hmm. We could do that. Um, let's see if we have more questions first, and if we still have time, uh, you can show us some other cool things. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Holly Meyer is saying that uh, he's new to your, your apps and was looking at your homepage and found yourfonts.com and an online font editor and was wondering how that all works. All right, yeah, well, uh, HiLogic has three products. Um, uh, the, the Font Creator is, is our flagship product and it all started more than 20 years ago with, uh, with that um, while I was a student, I, I couldn't afford um, a font manager, uh, a font editor at that time. Uh, and that was uh, FontLab uh, 
priced at four hundred dollars, and there was a lot of uh, beers for students uh, back then. <laughs> so um, uh, that's how uh, I started with Font Creator, and later on uh, there was a font manager added to the to the products, and then ScanHand mm -hmm. was. Um, made to actually uh, import uh, a piece of paper with with some cells and, and characters on it and then that was um, uh, converted into a font and your fonts is basically the online version of scan uh, and that font manager that's a main type is it yes that's correct right and main cool. type um, well uses the same code base for uh, for the software. So uh, the next version will also allow you to uh, use sliders to uh, to uh, to show uh, variable fonts in it. Ah, excellent. It's the the font goggles for Windows, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> and Ollie is following up with the functionality is limited, right? I'm not sure which which functionality he's referring to there. Oh, compared to the desktop app. Uh, well, both Scan and, and your phone <laughs> are very limited. The the, um, the the online version you you can provide one or two um, uh, filled in templates, uh, and the desktop version also allows you to to uh, make your own custom templates with specific code points. So you can further extend it with, um, well, I, I wouldn't recommend to, to add Chinese to it, but well, you can uh, make your own template. Excellent. I have a question for you myself, actually. I'm curious, what um, are the limits in terms of, with at least with your initial release here coming up, what are the limits for the number of axes and or the number of masters that Font Creator can handle? Um, well, there are no limits. Well, ex Sweet. Except, except for well. the, the limits that that are uh, there by the specs, of course. Yeah. Well, 65,536 uh, axes should be enough. <laughs> to paraphrase Bill Gates, <clears throat> um, one would hope. <clears throat> yeah. Well, uh, Form Creator has three editions, so the home edition will have. Um, um, well, probably one X uh, support for one axis and, and, and the standard edition for two or maybe three, I'm not sure. And the professional edition will, will uh, have unlimited. Uh, so nice. Cool. And um, for masters, same, same sort of deal, something similar. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, no, no limits. Uh, no. In the professional edition. Cool. Uh, well, I don't think uh, I, I will limit it in the other editions as well. Uh, only the axis. Sure, the axis serves the it, same functional purpose. Makes sense. It's, it's actually very Neat. complex to to even um, make variable fonts, of course. So if you also try to limit it, then the well, the user interface will um, be more sure. Complex. Yeah, no, as, as the former CEO of Font Lab, I am painfully aware of this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is, this is uh, complicated stuff and it's great that you've been able to make it work. Um, <clears throat> Holly Meyer was also asking uh, about OS support. So this is Windows only, doesn't do Mac or Linux, is that correct? Uh, yes, that's, co that's correct, yes. So um, it, it started uh, with Windows and um, uh, it, it always stayed at Windows. Um, yeah. Sure. Nope. Most of the font editing apps are, are single platform. That's not unusual. <clears throat> and the, the multi-platform thing, again, I can attest is uh, not trivial. <laughs> yeah, sure. I, I, I read uh, some uh, some post at uh, Type Broad, I believe, uh, the discussion between Font Lab and Glyphs uh, uh, the other day. Yeah. Yeah. So you did have something else you were interested in showing. If you want to do that, we could do that now. Just go up to the Apps button and then click on Desktop Share. And 
and away you go. I'll just mute myself while you do this. Okay. Um, well, let's fire up uh, Font Creator. So I have a, 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 a little project which uh, contains um, only a few letters to demonstrate how to um, um, use the feature variations with uh, the, the positioning. So what I've done is uh, I've added um, kerning to a variation uh, condition. And it applies to the, to the this pair. So you see it jumps at the, well, 420. And we also have a proofing tool, so you can um, you can see what's going on. I hope the resolution is good enough for everybody to to see it. Yeah. yeah. Now you see the the variation is triggered, and now it's not. And I've also added the substitution somewhere along the line here. And then, um, well, not useful, but just to illustrate uh, the, the power of the, this uh, feature variations. Nice. Looks like we have another question. Um, Ollie, Ollie has another one for us. If there is time left, on your website, you mentioned advanced validation features improve the quality of fonts. Uh, can you show us what, what some of the validation capabilities are in Font Creator? Okay. Yeah. Um, well, that's open I should open. just add, Ollie is, is quite right that you know, finding bugs in your fonts is an incredibly useful area of functionality so mm -hmm. um, it's great that fun creator has this all right now let's uh, open this one um another variable font um here's the validation wizard validate all layers and then it will will look for uh, issues well um th this validation wizard was built um before the feature uh, variable fonts were added to to font creator so it was uh, at that time very important to detect the uh, overlapping uh, contours uh, now that's obviously less of an issue uh, with variable fonts but it's uh, it's still uh, able to de detect them uh well the more you want to detect i, I i'm not going to say to to fix it but um it can fix most of that so it's now uh, looking through all the glyphs, outlines, all the layers, and it's um, finding issues. Well, obviously, it will find a lot of um, uh, overlapping contours. Intersecting coordinates, of course. Uh, I should actually disable that one. Now it's a lot faster. Uh, well, a lot of re redundant points, but that's also part of the it's nature variations. of variations. Yeah. So let's skip that one as well. Then you have a lot of off curve extremes. Um, well, this font is pretty um, well tested, I think. So that's good. Those are the validation features and um, they are now also available through this uh, item here on the left side. Ah, yes. There's also a validation panel. I've tried to hide some. Uh, um, well, here's. It's only probably one uh, unit of. 
this one is uh, at 350 and this one 349. Right. Yeah, nice catch. So that's uh, the uh, validations. Good question. Um, I can also show you the font properties. Well, th they are they are dictated by the the, the, the specifications. So Font Lab and other font editors um, have the the same uh, properties, of course. Um, well, you can auto calculate uh, some values. If you want to, you can um, add uh, well localized. Uh, German, Austria, well, if you like, you can uh, add them uh, to, to most of the um, strings. You have also the allied fallback name. That's also something that's part of the variable fonts. Um, well, of course, the metrics. In this case, the black ones um, contain metrics because I consider them primary masters. That might be something different than other font editors. I'm not sure yet. And these don't have metrics. They're, those are all interpolated, so they are not needed there. That makes it a lot. Um, uh, you, you have a better oversight of what you're doing, I hope. And of course, your instances. And one of them is, uh, well, the default. And that one also contains some uh, more um, naming information. Uh, you have your panels. That was a discussion yesterday about uh, classification. Uh, well, you can uh, define that if, if needed. You can do it for all instances, and then you can uh, export um, instances if you uh, if you want to, or you can export masters or just the, the variable font itself. The, the all the the the, the software uh, the, the code is all native except for the auto hinting. Um, th then it's uh, using a TTF auto hint. But th this is all native uh, code, so it's bro. Well, it's it's mostly um, uh, single threaded, so it could be faster. But I, I think for now it's fast enough. Um, so now it's exported uh, variable font. Here it is. And it's actually. Um, very good at compressing fonts. When you compare it to the original, well, it's it, it might not be uh, very significant, but uh, it's five kilobytes smaller than um, the original version. Nice. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, as part of that um, color font. Do you rehint the font? Like, are you able to preserve the original hinting? The original hinting will be preserved, yes, um, mm -hmm. for the default layer. Mm -hmm. So the variable hinting uh, will be lost. Ah, but okay. Usually, there is hardly any variable hinting uh, in included in a font. Um, so we have another question. Um, okay. Paul Vanderlen asks if Font Creator has an API for scripting. That's a good question. Um, no, there are some transform features currently disabled because it's it's broken right now due to the uh, adding a variable font uh, functionality. But uh, there is no scripting in it yet. Um, I'm I'm thinking about it because uh, well I. I I realize a lot of, well, not all people, but there are a lot of people really used to um, using scripting to enhance or to 
edit or to test their, their, their fonts. But um, maybe at a later version, if there's uh, enough uh, interest for it. The shaping engine is also um, homebrew, so it, it it's not perfect. Um, I I really recommend uh, to 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 use um, uh, half bus or, or something else because that's far more superior. Uh, but well, I I started with this and uh, well, it's now um, for Arabic, for example, it's working uh, very good. You can uh, you can test all your features live. You can make um, adjustments if if needed. Um, well, this font does not have a lot of anchors, but maybe this one has. Mark to mark, mark to base. You can also inspect the other fonts to see if there are, um, well, irregularities or. It's easy to to uh, decompile the feature code, Adobe feature code, and then just um, uh, compile it. And then it will um, see some things. For example, there's a variation feature, well, the Adobe feature syntax does not understand the variable um, uh, feature syntax uh, uh, yet, the feature variations. Mm -hmm. um, so it's probably using the, the most commonly used one is the dollar sign. And some sure. other currencies. Well, this gets, oh yeah, the, there's the dollar. And you can also test this uh, within the font editor. And let me. Well, in this case, it's the character you're editing. So then it's not using the shaping engine because that would mess things up. But now it's uh, also included in uh, real time in your glyph edit uh, panel. All right. Nice. Oh, I had one other question, and this is just, this may be my faulty memory, and it may also be obsolete information, but I seem to recall that the first time I looked at Font Creator, um, the one thing that was impressive was that you had native support for true type outlines. Um, but at the time, I think you only did true type outlines. What's, was that still the case? What's the story there? Yeah, it started all, well, it's a Windows based font editor. So then uh, it all started with uh, the true type outlines. Uh, later on, um, uh, Cubic has been added as well. And you Sweet. can, you can um, you you can uh, you can use both. Um, most likely, I'm not sure if uh, if if I open a UFO, it's uh, it's cubic based. The variable fonts um, most are true type based, and currently, Font Creator 14 is not supporting CFF2 um, due to a lack of time, and there's there's hardly any support for it. So it was wise to skip that for the first release. Think. Sure. Not crazy. Font Lab did the same thing and later added the CFF variable support. And even then, I think it's still exper quotes experimental. <clears throat> Not sure how long this one is nice. going to open, but let's try it. Maybe this one is cubic.
Any other questions for Erwin? So Font Creator is using one thread to open all the UFO files. It's, it's well, slow. Yeah, this is probably the single area where uh, multi-threading would be the most benefit dealing with UFO. Yeah. Well, UFO um, support has been recently added to, to Font Creator as well. It, um, I think last year or the year before that. Um, so. Well, it, it can still be improved, of course. Um, well, here you see, for example, the it's just a minor thing, but the name of this axis, I, I should probably write it with an upper case W. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, that's working just fine. Um, but mm -hmm. we wanted to see if there was Q or Q. Yeah, this is a cubic um, outline, cubic based. Hmm. You can um, you can convert it to true type if you want to. Hmm. All right. Um, one thing I have to get used to myself is I'm now using an interpolated um, outline. I can't change an interpolated yeah. outline, of course. Sure. <laughs> it's, it's not real. <laughs> no. And uh, the only thing I, 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 um, I can see it is the interpolated um, uh, metrics, the, the left and right side bearings. Right. So you need to click on a master to get a a real outline. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I can yeah, yeah. Pick one of them, uh, or, or to alternatively, I can th just go to this uh, main, main um, dialog, and then I think it converts all at once. So now it's quadratic. And it used to be 26 points. And after the conversion, it's still 26 points. If you want to make a comparison, um, it now also has a mask feature. Okay. Nice. And uh, let me now do the conversion uh, again. And then you should see some. Difference. Considering you didn't change the number of points, that's not a not a big difference at all. Well, if you have it at one hundred percent, this is the original. Then you hardly notice it. If you zoom to, do you um, are there any sort of user accessible controls on that conversion? By the way, like the trade off no. between points and closer fidelity? No, not right now. No. Yeah. The, it, most of the time, uh, the such features uh, and enhancements will be added if, uh, if people request them, if they are really needed. Um, so maybe it's time for uh, such uh, options. Awesome. Well, it's really nice to see um, Font Creator doing variable fonts and mm -hmm. with support for not just support for variable fonts, but really all the bells and whistles. You know, all, you know, a lot of the subtle intricacies and and details of things you could do that are part of the spec, but you wouldn't necessarily expect everyone to do. You're doing those things, so that's impressive stuff. 
Um, <coughs> Another thing that's a little different than uh, what others, uh, other font editors do is um, font creator does not require you to have anchors for all your masters. Um, oh. the, the reasoning is this, is this like the metrics you interpolate the other ones? Exactly. Uh, yeah. This font contains um, 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 anchors for all the um, masters, um, but they should be interpolated if um, if you remove one from the middle. For example, from the thin one, those should not be needed. Now, now you see they are slightly moved. So for some reason they they were needed because now they are interpolated but at the wrong position. Um, and that's probably because the outline of the thin ver variant is not well interpolated as well. It's slightly different, um, maybe a little wider than you would expect if it was interpolated between the two um, uh, other masters. But there are examples that, uh, that, that that you clearly can see they are redundant and uh, and not needed. Not in this case. So we can um, export this one, spectral build to exports. It's taking some time. And well, there it is. Uh, there are five compatibility issues. I'm not sure why. There's something, the O indicates there's something with the outline. <laughs> so, ah, this one has 35 points, 37, 37. So there's well, some something to fix. Well, I'm not sure if uh, if I have. I think I've covered it all. Yeah, and we're pretty much near the end of our slot anyway. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm. This is uh, good stuff. And yeah. mm -hmm. I'm sure that uh, folks interested in doing font creation and editing on Windows should be excited to see uh, another app getting variable. All right, thank you, Thomas. And, <clears throat> and uh, of course we can, people can always go to the Hangout room if they like or just uh, take a break before the next talk. Um, thanks for sh showing us this, and uh, well, thank you for. Look forward uh, to seeing the the launch in a few days. Yeah, great. Thank you, Thomas.